Many of us homeschool because we want to raise our children to be authentic disciples of Jesus Christ. Today's guest, Dr. Ben Akers, is here to tell us about the Word of Life series designed for building strong Catholics in K-8 through grade. Welcome to Homeschooling Saints, the podcast that helps you create the homeschool you love for the people you love. Our host is Lisa Maladnik, a Catholic life coach, TV host, best-selling author, and an instructor at Homeschool Connections. Before we get started, remember to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're watching on YouTube, click the bell to join our channel. Hello and welcome. I'm Lisa Maladnik. Today we're talking with Dr. Ben Akers about building strong Catholics in K through eighth grade. And we're really touching on his Word of Life series from Augustine Institute. A little about our guest, Dr. Ben Akers is the Chief Content Officer at the Augustine Institute. He previously served as an Associate Professor of Theology and the Executive Director of the Augustine Institute's Formed.org platform, which is a streaming platform providing trustworthy and inspiring Catholic video, audio, and ebook content from the Augustine Institute, Ignatius Press, and more than 60 other partners. Formed.org helps parishes, families, and individuals explore their faith anywhere. Before joining the Augustine Institute in 2015, Dr. Akers served as the director of the Denver Catholic Biblical and Catechetical Schools and was an adjunct for the St. John Vianney Theological Seminary. His experience living and studying in the heart of the Catholic Church in Rome, Italy, has inspired him to teach theology in a way that integrates history, art, literature, and spirituality. Uh, ben, it is so good to have you here. Thank you so much for making the time. It must be so busy where you are. It is, but it's a great joy to to, to meet people like you and to your listeners uh, virtually and uh, to, to talk about all the wonderful things we're doing here at the Augustine Institute. Yeah, I've been, a lot of us, been watching Augustine, Augustine Institute and really enjoying your resources for a long time. And as we were talking about before we hit record, there's hardly a parish in this country and beyond that doesn't have your form.org program running, to, you know, available to its parishioners. So the impact has been really incredible. We we feel very blessed. And we think that the the secret of our success is we're just trying to tell God's story in many different ways. We tell it, you know, give the students in our graduate school an opportunity to understand the great theology that our Catholic Church's history has. We are through formed. We have stories about saints and art and other movies that tell people about the great riches of our church's tradition. Our Amen app is how people pray and introduce them to the, 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 the church's treasures as well. So we think we're just, just trying to be faithful to God's story and getting people to trust God and listen to God and, and have them uh, be open to what he has in store for them in their lives. Mm, amen and amen. And part of your story too, Ben, is that you're a homeschooling dad. Would you just uh, step us into a few of the details about that? Sure. So we became a homeschooling family. We always loved homeschooling. I never met a homeschooler actually um, until I went to college and I met some people in college like, I was homeschooled. I was like, what? That's a thing? You could do that? And so, but now we've seen this incredible movement in the United States of growing homeschooling. And we've been blessed with five kids uh, ages four to 12 in my own family. And we were sending you to a great Catholic, Catholic school, I still love it, support it. Uh, but when COVID hit, everyone became a homeschooling family. And what we realized through our homeschooling the last, and we stayed a homeschooling family, is it's such a wonderful opportunity to spend time with your children. And my, I, I have my doctorate in theology. My wife has a master's degree, so you know we felt competent to actually pre, you know present material to our students and uh, our church students, <laughs> our children. Right? <laughs> I joke that I'm the principal and she's their teacher. And sometimes I come home from from work. I'm like, how was school today? How's your teacher? Who's your favorite teacher? And it's fun to <laughs> you know because my wife principally is, is doing the heavy lifting. So all the credit to her. And uh, what we've noticed and what the real blessing is, is to be able to spend time with, with the children and very kind of focused individual education planning with them and uh, working, working through particular subjects with them, especially ones that might be challenging. We can give them attention that they might not get in the Catholic school system here. And we also are excited that um, 
it's been a chance for us to gather with other homeschooling families and my wife to really explore, you know, she's like, I'm, I'm going to teach Roman history this year. And so to dive into Roman history and to, to see the skits they put on and the plays that they do and what they're learning and the games that they come up with. So it's really unlocked creativity in my children and in my, in my wife that we've seen in homeschooling and uh, I've just always admire how you know, late nights, you know, diligent and focused she is in, in preparing for what, you know, the, what she's teaching our kids. So it's oh, been a real wonderful. blessing in our life. Yeah, praise God. And, and it, I love that God did an end run around the difficulties of COVID. Like we had a lot of losses, everyone had struggles, there was terrible things, right? But he also always blesses us in a time of, you know, whether it's persecution or, or illness or whatever it might be that's come in our way, that's come against us in some way, God always finds a better way. Uh, so beautiful to hear many, many stories. And I know a lot of our listeners are the same and discovered homeschooling during the lockdowns. So cool. Uh, okay, so let's yeah, get yeah. back to, sorry, go ahead. You're going to say something, Ben? No, no, I just want to say for the listeners, I know we have a homeschooling listening audience, but to really be a witness, it, it really, what, what struck me is, when I go to our parish and our parish has a great Catholic school and has, you know, parents that send their kids to public school, but our religious education. And, you know, we tell me homeschool and you get kind of get that cockeyed look and like, Oh, that's interesting. You're weird, but you're kind of normal, but that's weird. Or, you know, whatever the reactions are, just, you know, I just want to say to homeschooling family, like I've always admired y'all. Now I'm one of you. And I think it's just a witness that we can give to the world of, you know, we think the formation of our children is top priority. And it's a witness to show that this world is the prologue to eternal life. And so, you know, for us, what really can't have the, it was a blessing to be able to homeschool. Not everyone has the means or the, the ability to do that. So to really see it as a blessing and to know that every child's different too, that sometimes the, what works now this year for this child might not work for the next year. And we all know this, uh, you know, I just, I've always seen homeschooling parents to be the most attentive parents to their children. That's a beautiful witness that you, that you all give. So thank you. Oh, thank you for saying that. Because um, we we try to encourage everybody on this show because we all have good and bad days as homeschoolers, and God equips the called, right? So He's using all your incredible education in some ways, but undoubtedly, as parents, you're having to stretch in other ways, and that's true for all of us. We bring ourselves into the mix, and God just blesses and draws out so much, as you said, like the creativity in your own family. It's so beautiful. Well, I love that you bring creativity into the sphere of creation. In Catholic resources, and many Catholics do use, you know, sort of boxed sets of things, things from really good Catholic publishers for their kids. And so here's another one of those kinds of opportunities, except like many new resources, it has, it's, it, we, it operates and we interact with it on a lot of different levels. So start us off by just saying a little bit about what specific need does Word of Life fill in the church? What was that initial spark for this program? Yeah, so the Word of Life series is a K through eight curriculum, basal curriculum set, along with parish formations and homeschoolers can use it as well. That we produced along and are still in production with our partners at Ignatius Press. So Ignatius Press, known for its great publishing and editing of great texts, is Faith and Life curriculum series that that some of the listeners might be familiar with. And it really was born from a re relationship of, of trust and friendship between Father Fessio and Mark Brumley over at Ignatius Press and Tim Gray, our president at the Augusta Institute, having a conversation one summer about, you know, what we really need is we need a strong curriculum pro product. And we were interested in doing that because we had produced Signs of Grace, which is our first confession and first communion that we've really focused on for parishes and creating uh, parish resources. And they had faith in life and they were going to redo that. And so that conversation bore fruit into the Word of Life series that we're working on now because we're both trusted and known, thanks be to God, publishers and creators of content, if you will. And what we wanted to do is bring those fresh eyes to the market because you know there's there's some big names out there in the curriculum in the curriculum industry, there's some new new faces as well. We want to be one of those new faces because in looking at the last 50 years in the United States, we've had an increase, 34% increase of Catholics, of people becoming Catholic, thanks be to God. But we've also seen a, you know, a related sharp decline in Catholic school attendance and parish religious education. And when parents are polled randomly about why would you send your kid to a Catholic school, 89% of them say, I want to send my kid to a Catholic school because of the quality religious education. 
And so we could debate whether or not that's been effective or not, but we really thought that we could bring something to the table in this, this sphere of helping to serve parishes, which is part of our mission here at the Augustine Institute, along with being an educational apostolate. So creating this K-8 program. Mm, wonderful. It's so exciting to hear when friendships, just kind of a natural sense of friendship. You've been running into each other professionally, you're connected in various ways, and a conversation happens. I love when the Holy Spirit does that in our natural friendships. So good. Um, yeah, so there are four golden catechetical threads. Where When I looked at your website and I looked how beautiful everything was, um, just step us into what you had in mind. What, what was that design intention for each of those threads and how they help our kids. Yes. Yeah, so the, the four golden, golden threads, these are what's going to be weaved in between every chapter and unit all through K through eight. So this is a very important thing for us. The first is salvation history. We need to know God's story. So every every chapter, every unit is going to have a focus on scripture. You're going to get to know the heroes and the heroines and even the villains that we find in salvation history because they are they are given to us, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, these, these things were written down for us. Us, this whole Old Testament was written down for us, for us to grow in edification, to grow up to us, to grow in knowledge that God has revealed himself, that God has a plan and that these people, the story of Israel is our story as well. So first we want to introduce students, the first golden thread, salvation history to the story of God acting in human history perfectly fulfilled in com the coming of his son, uh, Jesus Christ, and then sending of the spirit and the church in which we live is how we are made members of this story. This The second thread is a um, Christian anthropology. Christian anthropology is what is the human person made in the image and likeness of God? What does that mean? So I sometimes joke with my graduate school students here is that we're living in a time right now, a culture that doubts the first three pages of salvation history, especially that God created, that God's or orderly creation has man and woman, and he made them man and woman in his own image of likeness, and they're called be fruitful and multiply. These are all things that our culture, right? We might think that just makes sense, but they actually had to be revealed to us because our culture is actually straight on attacking these things, that there is a man and there is a woman, that they're called to be fruitful and multiply, that God created everything. And so we really look at in Christian anthropology, of course, age appropriate, right? This is a big, these are two big, you know, it's a big word to throw at, you know, second grader. We don't throw those words at the second grader. This is all age appropriate. The idea is that we have an intellect, we have a mind that is made for truth. We have a will. We have a faculty by which we choose things, choose good, choose you know, choose bad things. And what we're actually made for is love. And that in these ways, we image God so that when we sin, we break that relationship. But God has a solution to that, the sacrament of confession where we can be restored to him. So this is the idea with Christian anthropology is who the human person is. That yes, our will, because of original sin, our intellect has been darkened, our will has been weakened, our passions are disordered. But the answer to that is God's grace and also to the third pillar of heroic virtue and character formation. We can make good choices. And so the focus on heroic virtue is that's one of the things that the church looks at when they determine whether a man or woman is, a, is to be a saint, along with miracles and things. Did they live out the virtues of faith, hope, and charity heroically? And the world in which we live, to live virtuously is heroic. And so heroic virtue is we're called to be saints. We're not trying with our, this curriculum to form little th mini theologians, right? No curriculum should do that. That's not the goal of curriculum. Uh, the goal of curriculum is to make people aware that they are sons and daughters of the Father. And so to make children of God, better children of God. And so we teach about virtue and character formation, that the way we make certain choices help us build up our character to be more conformed to Christ. Or bad choices lead us away from conformity to Christ. So this really focus on character formation. And the last one is a uh, last th golden thread weaving between each chapter and unit is learning through discipleship. Discipleship is the call that we have to be followers of Christ and to imitate him. And so being a disciple is being able to listen. So ways that we accomplish that in the text is we teach the students Lexio Divina which is the prayerful meditative reading of sacred scripture. So every chapter begins with Lexio Divina. And at the early grades, we have some videos and audio to supplement that as they get, you know, as they become able readers themselves, then they can actually read and engage the text themselves. We have prompts to help them through that. But 
that to be a good disciple of Christ, we have to first listen to him, to have posture of listening, and then to, to activate the graces that he's offering us to then make good choices to follow him. And we know that following him even leads to, to the cross and finally to, to resurrection. So those are the four golden threads that are weaving throughout our curriculum. Wow. I love that you added discipling because it's something that we talk about, but we don't necessarily know in a practical sense how to engage. Um, it's it's one thing to teach ideas and, and concepts and things like that. It's another to embody it. And, and just stepping into that more relational aspect of Lexio Divina, of being able to make it part of our daily, you know, opening and letting God pour into us relationship so that we are different so that our doing is flowing out of a different kind of being. It is. And one of the ways we also accomplish that is every chapter and unit focuses on a the story of salvation history, some aspect of it. But then we tell a story of a saint who embodies that virtue, or embodies one of the, the, the tenets that we're teaching in that curriculum. So to show that, you no, know, it's doable. These people, these men and women were heroic. They said yes, and all ages and stages are going to be represented in the history of the church and these saints. But then the th- third part we do in each chapter, especially for the K through five curriculum, is we have Paul McCusker. Paul McCusker is a great storyteller. He is for Adventures in Odyssey, working for Focus on the Family, converted to the Catholic faith, now works here at the Augustine Institute as our master storyteller, is he tells a story from this universe, if I say, you know, of Hope Springs, this fictional town in Colorado, where all these people are interacting. And if your readers, your listeners might be familiar with our um, Nick and Sam series or Virtue Chronicles of books that he's written, they all take place in the same Hope Springs universe, if you will. Our curriculum introduces our readers, our our students, to a story where the people in the story have to make a choice and how that choice plays over in you know, good consequences and bad consequences to their choices. So that's another way we weave discipleship and virtue into the curriculum and the teaching. Wonderful. All right, everybody, we're going to take our really quick sponsor break, and we will be right back with Dr. Ben Akers talking about Word of Life. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Walter Crawford. And I'm Maureen Whitman. We are the co-founders of homeschoolconnections.com and proud sponsors of the Homeschooling Saints podcast. Which is here to help you homeschool more joyfully, more easily, and more effectively. We want to thank you for listening. And we invite you to check out our courses at homeschoolconnections.com. And now back to our program. All right, we're back with Dr. Ben Akers talking about Word of Life from Augustine Institute, having such an interesting conversation about all the different parts that are woven together to help you really engage your children, K through 8, in becoming disciples of Christ. So there are a variety of resources. I noticed there are things online. You mentioned there are videos. Can you just break it down for us? And also with an eye as a homeschooling dad to how would you envision us using some of these things at home? Yes. So we we tried to create this curriculum to be maximally flexible for what works in the parish, for the schools, and for homeschooling families. And so we've we have uh, the lessons are broken down into a 60 minute and 90 minute parish edition. So parishes have been really responsive to this and excited to implement this in their parish. So if you have a 60 minute session, you have 90 minute session per week, we have options for you. So we have the core content and you can build it out with different exercises. And that could be flexible for homeschoolers as well. So maybe just once a week as a family or twice a week as a family, you decide to do religious education. So that curriculum that we've developed, you can use it that way. We've also developed a four-day, five-day curriculum for the schools. We really want Catholic schools to be able to adopt this program as well. So the four days with one day of review is kind of how we built it out for a 50-minute classroom. So those are options as well. And then we get to the classroom, we have the student text. If you're teaching in a parish, we have a parish catechist manual. So sometimes, unfortunately, the, the it comes down to, we need more volunteer catechists. Susie in the second row, you're teaching second grade. I've never taught second grade. I don't know what second grade. And your know, father can hand her this textbook, the parish catechist manual, and say, it's everything's there. Ask this, start with this question. Think of a time when, you know, fill it in. And so that the catechist can feel completely prepared to be able to execute the, the content in the classroom. Um, we also have teacher manuals. So those who are in the parish school system, you know, built out for you for different exercises uh, that way. And so a, a homeschooling family, those are both options, the parish catechist manual, the, the teacher manual for the parish schools to how you might want to build this out at, 
at home. The, another thing that you could do as a homeschooling family is that we've created resources, videos, for example, um, along with other re resources that you can find on form.org that are helpful to the parent. So we really want the parent. So our goal is we want good catechesis for the children, and we think we're delivering that. We also know that the catechist might not be formed, or the pair, the school teacher actually might not be as well formed in the, you know, they, they teach the subject, but they're being asked to teach religion now. So we've designed the, man, the teaching manual so that the teacher is getting formation as well. And we have resources on our digital portal for the teachers, for the parents to be able to get formed in the faith. So a parent can go on and say, wow, this is, you know, my son and daughter is learning about faith, the virtue of faith, but I don't really know about the virtue of faith. And so we'll have a video or audio resource for you on that platform, uh, the portal, so that you can listen or you can read depending on how it's delivered to a subject on faith that's age appropriate for you as a parent. Because we really want to equip the parents because the parents are the primary educators of their children for all things, but especially the faith. But Christian Smith, the sociologist over at Notre Dame, said, you know, studied students. He said, if students and little and children, how do they, if they practice faith into the adulthood, three things were necessary. The parents cared about the faith. The parents shared about the faith that the one time in my life, I really had our time. Parents cared. They talk about it on a day that's not just Sunday. They, they talk about God on not just the day we go to church. And the parents showed up, that the parents were actually engaged in this religious formation, either by going to some, a Bible study or faith formation themselves and at the parish or maybe watching something hopefully formed or some other great resource, um, that those were the three things that were necessary for a child to see in their parents for them to for the faith to be important to them into adulthood. These are absolutely attainable, absolutely attainable. And I know your listeners are, are all on the same page with this, but we've tried to create these resources for the parents that are sending their kids to Catholic school that may or may not be well-formed. There's something for them as well. So we're trying to hit not only the children, but with the parents, a multi-pronged approach in our formation uh, through this curriculum. Yeah, and that's so important because there have been so many instances where parents volunteer to do something at the parish, whether it's a vacation Bible school or helping to teach the faith. And through that experience, they have a deeper encounter with their own faith. So teaching is one of the great joys of homeschooling. So many moms have said this, and, uh, and I've said it myself, that by coming alongside our children's learning process, we learned things that we were never taught. And we reached a little further and we went a little deeper. And so for anyone listening that feels like, oh gosh, this is going to be over my head, just take it on the Holy Spirit's pacing. If you're at home, you decide how often you dip into these deep waters, what breaks you take. And, and I would definitely, if you're a mom with, with a dad, you know, as, as Ben was saying, he's kind of the principal and comes home and jokes with his kids. But if your husband is working outside the home, there may be times when he is available, when you may want to do some of this religious education learning too, because we're seeing that the impact of the father's leadership, of seeing him on his knees, seeing him him prioritize time for learning the faith really makes a very powerful difference. The mom is, of course, integral, very important, and I'm not trying to discourage any single moms out there, but the father's impact is tremendous, uh, even in small bites. Um, so thank you for, for making it clear that we can be equipped to walk this road with our kids, that there's lots there for us along the way. We don't have to have it all figured out before we step right in. You know. That's right. One of the most powerful things you can say to your child is like, I don't know the answer and not just and leave it there, but to, I don't know the answer, but let's find out. Let's go find out together. And you know a place to be able to go and find those answers. Yeah. And I'm going to put in our show notes to form.org. And you mentioned your free, completely free Amen app. And yeah, I know what you said before, Ben, I can't remember it was before we hit record, but people shouldn't have to pay to pray. Um, and so we've got some great options for people at a lot of different levels of prayer. That's right. And so my, the way that my family uses it is on the Amen app. It's a free prayer app. It has the daily readings with a little bit of Lexio prompts that my wife sits down with the with the kids around the table and they listen to the readings of the day along with those Lexio prompts. And then she kind of does a little Bible study or questions, answers afterwards with it. So I know we spend a lot of time to, to sports and even to go to co-ops that we do. We participate as homeschoolers. So there's saint stories for kids. There's um, you know, prayers for families. There's rosaries. 
devotions that are on this Amen app. So it's something really great for the car. I know some parents might not want to put technology in your kids' hands, but this is a completely free audio app that helps people at different levels of, of prayer and spirituality books as well that are on there. Yeah, great suggestion. A lot of us joke about car schooling because so many great lessons are learned when we're in transit from one place to another. Yeah, so you said you're getting some great feedback. I'm hoping that you're going to get some great homeschooling feedback too. Have you had the opportunity to touch base with any homeschoolers with some of these materials yet? I know our sales team personally, anecdotally, I don't, I don't, I, ha I haven't, um, but I do test. I have a, you know, it's nice to have a test case at home where I can bring materials home that are being in written in process and kind of see how my kids at different ages react to it. So, you Great. know, here's a video that our studios did, what, you know, watch it. What do you guys think? And kind of get real life feedback. But um, I do know that we have about 50,000, over 50,000 students that are using the program right now in the United States in just our first year of launch. So wow. we think that the Lord is, uh, we're grateful to the Lord for blessing us. We think there's a real interest of, of uh, parishes and schools to use this curriculum. Yeah. Amen and amen. Uh, ben, thanks so much. Any final thoughts for our listening families about anything that we've touched on? I just I, I think that uh, just, again, thank you for the witness that you do of, of homeschooling. It's Again, it's not easy. Um, uh, and it's the, the world is against us, contra mundum in this, you know, it feels like. But, you know, if the Lord is really like lean into the Lord and his grace, lean into the Holy Spirit and what, where he's leading you and your family it might be different directions than you even anticipate, but always be a learning family, create a culture. I'd say just create a culture of learning and homeschooling does that. But especially if the kids see the parents, they're wanting to learn and grow in the faith. And uh, we have wonderful, I just say, I, I know um representing the Augustus Institute with Formed but and Ignatius Press as a, a partner as well. But there's some great Catholic films and shows and movies on there. One of our most popular thing, if this, I think just as time appropriate, is a commentary on The Chosen. I know people are pros and cons and hot or cold on The Chosen, but we have two Catholic theologians, a biblical scholar and a Catholic theologian, who do a commentary on each series to say, is this hitting the Catholic mark or not hitting the Catholic mark? And so I think that'd be a great resource to our hope that is just hope for that is just to create conversations among families about these things. So, yeah, fantastic. But just yeah. keep up the good fight. Thank you for the witness. Yeah, thank you so much because that's so timely, and and there are lots of different points of view. But it's great to touch base with someone knowledgeable to just answer our questions about where there where it's a hit and where it's a miss. And of course, just a plug for the the lead actor playing Jesus is fantastic, Jonathan Rumi. Um, and yeah, his uh, his first act his his first acting gig is actually you can find it on form. He played Jesus in a Divine Mercy that Leonardo de Filippis and his Saint Luke's production did. So oh, he's really? played Jesus before in a Catholic production. Yeah. Oh, that's a little known wonderful. Fact. Wonderful to hear. Yeah. And I just saw Leonardo de, F de Filippis. I'm, I don't know how long ago he made it in a DVD of St. John of the Cross. Have seen him do things with the various Catholic publishers, too. Great, great artist. Um, thank you so much, Ben. It's been really fun having this conversation with you. Um, everybody, I've got in the show notes where you can find Word of Life. You can take a look at all the kind of pieces and parts. And is there somebody, like, if they had questions, would there be a way for them to interact with someone about the curriculum and how... Further there support. is. So you can fill out your, your exactly. You can put your contact information in, and we have a great uh, customer support team and sales team that we'd be very happy to answer any questions that you have. Oh, that's wonderful. And I'm also putting form.org, uh, the link to the Amen app. That's the free prayer app. And also just the link uh, to Dr. Ben Akers, his faculty bio there at the Augustine Institute. Another great Catholic homeschooling dad out there doing beautiful things in the church. Uh, can't thank you enough. Well, thank you, Lisa. All right, everybody. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Have a great week. And that's our show for today. Our program is sponsored by homeschoolconnections.com. Be sure to subscribe to Homeschooling Saints and leave us an honest review. God bless you and thank you for joining us. <laughs>